morning. So I'm Tracy. I am your worship pastor. Um, And if you spend any amount of time with me at all, you're going to learn a couple of things that I am super passionate about. And they are this. Jesus, my family and friends, Disney World and all things Harry Potter, and naps. These are like the loves of my life, the passions in my heart. If you want to be best friends with me, talk to me about, that, about those things or invite me to go take a nap. Okay, those are uh, the things that make me tick. Um, I've been married to my awesome husband, Tim, for 16 years now. We have um, two ginger kiddos, Kylie and Anderson, and they are undoubtedly the two most amazing children to have ever walked the planet. Um, and so that's a little bit about um, who I am. So the thing that we're going to talk about today, you guys, when I tell you what it is, you're going to be like, yes, this is my favorite thing to talk about. I am so pumped to think and talk about this thing. And that thing is pain. Woo! Get pumped. I know you are as excited as I am to talk about pain because it's just so much fun, right? So um, I want to tell you something that happened within our family about two years ago in August of 2020. So I mentioned both of my kids are the most amazing children. Um, One of them, Andy, I'm going to talk about him today a little bit. Uh, He um, has some medical complexities. You wouldn't know it to look at him. But in August of 2020, uh, he was scheduled to have a big surgery. And believe it or not, this was surgery number 15 for him. And he was five at the time. So he's been through the ringer a little bit. And so surgeries one through 14, uh, Tim and I had been able to go to the hospital with him and be a part of the surgery and the recovery. Um, And if you've spent any time in a hospital, you know that there's not a lot of rest that happens in a hospital. So it's nice to have a partner with you and you can like trade off a little bit. Uh, Sometimes there are decisions to be made. Uh, Sometimes there are hard conversations to have in the hospital. So it's really nice when you can tag team and kind of do that together. Unfortunately, August of 2020 was about five or six months into the start of COVID. So it was a one parent situation, uh, and, and which totally makes sense. Like, we get it. Uh, it's just hard. So we um, decided that I was going to go uh, with Andy to this surgery, and we knew that recovery was going to take about a week. So we anticipated spending about a week in the hospital. Okay, so surgery itself went fine, like, did all the things it was supposed to do. So we're in recovery. And about night two or three of recovery, Andy started having some pain. And it wasn't at his surgical site. It was somewhere else in his body. And you guys, for hours, for hours, he cried. And he screamed. And he asked for help. And for hours, I laid in that hospital bed with him. And I cried. And I asked for help, and nobody could figure out what the problem was. Nobody could figure out what was causing the pain. And so doctors would rotate through the room, and they were doing tests, and they were trying to figure out what the heck is going on, and they couldn't find an answer. So that was not an easy couple of hours um, for us. So eventually, the pain passed. He got some relief. And so hours later, when he was able to rest, um, when he was able to fall asleep, and I was able to like pause for a second and catch my breath. Um, and I was able to reflect a little bit. I thought to myself, and like, I can't believe I'm telling you this in church. <laughs> I thought to myself, I think this whole God thing is BS. And I was a pastor at this church. <laughs> and that's what I thought. I was that angry. I was that angry that my five-year-old was experiencing this pain. And I'm, I'm guessing if you are a parent or a caregiver, you know the feeling of like, do anything to me, do anything at all to me. My child shouldn't have to experience this. And I was so mad, you guys. Um, <clears throat> and I was like, God, like, for real, like, I work for you, like, full time with my whole job and my whole heart, like, I'm giving you everything why aren't you showing up? Like, come on, man. Like, what are you doing? And I'm willing to bet that there's been a point somewhere in your life that there has been a time that you've gone like, God, where are you? Like, God, 
Are you serious? Like, why aren't you showing up? Or, God, I'm so angry with you about this thing. Or even, if you're a Christ follower, like, even maybe like, God, are you even real? And if you're not a Christ follower, this might be even more true for you. There may have been a time in your life when you go, you know, like, people are telling me that this God is good, but I don't see it in my own life. I think it's likely that we have all experienced some kind of pain or suffering or trauma or trial that has had us asking these questions. Um, And unfortunately, nobody goes through life pain-free. It's easy to see trouble and suffering if we look around in the world, uh, if we look on the news, like literally anything that you see on the news, you're going to see some pain and trouble. Guys, like addiction, divorce, disease, war, like there is no shortage of trouble. And even in the Bible, Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, he says, in this world, you will have trouble. Not you might, not, I'm going to mention this just in case, but hopefully you don't. It is, you will have trouble. And if you haven't yet, if you're listening to me and you're going like, no, yeah, no, I really haven't experienced that. Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that maybe you just haven't lived quite long enough. Unfortunately, nobody gets through life with no pain. And so, um, if we look throughout history, the same is true of people throughout time. Like throughout history, people have experienced trouble and suffering and difficulty. If we look in the Bible, plenty of people have experienced trouble. Um, we're starting a ser- or we're in week two of a sermon series called Summer in the Psalms. One of my favorite things about Psalms is if you take out your Bible and you split it right in the middle, you're going to find yourself in Psalms. And so then I need to hang a little bit of a left because we're going to be in Psalm 77 today. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and take it out. If you don't, that's okay. The scripture is going to be on the screen. Um, also, side note, if you have a smartphone, which most of us probably do, if you haven't already done so, I really encourage you to get the version Bible app. It's totally free, uh, and it has the Bible just at your fingertips. I use that app almost every day, and so um, that's a really handy app to have. And so in the Psalms, um, there are kind of a wide variety of um, kind of themes in the Psalms. This one in particular is not a heartwormer, okay? This is not a, God, you are awesome, everything is wonderful, hip, hip, hooray. That's not what this one is about. Okay, Psalm 77, Asaph wrote Psalm 77, and he worked for King David. And he was one of King David's um, directors of music, a worship pastor, if you will, okay? And Asaph um, had experienced some pain, and he was in the thick of it. Um, And if you're on TikTok, I hope your brain just went into the thick of it, like mine did. But if it didn't, that's okay. Um, Okay, so let's focus. (laughs) Okay, so um, Asaph wrote in Psalm 77, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and I would not be comforted. I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated and my spirit asked, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? So Asaph was in the thick of it, and he, just like we do sometimes, was asking God, was crying out to God, was questioning God, was saying like, God, where are you? Like, you said you'd be merciful, you said you'd be compassionate, I'm not seeing that. And he might have even been angry with God. And so, so what do we do with all that? Okay, so like everybody experiences pain and sorrow. Great. Okay, awesome. We're all on the same page. So do we just go like, wow, 
That's really a bummer. Okay, see you next Sunday. Have an awesome week. So, no, that's not what we're going to do. Um, so there's something that I've discovered. Um, pain can make us believe the lie that God is not good. Pain can make us believe the lie that God is not good. And so what are we gonna do when we find ourselves in pain and we find ourselves believing this lie? There's three things that I'm gonna recommend that we do. And we're gonna dig into these three things today. They are be honest with God and with others. Pray and ask for help and remember God's deeds and his promises. So let's dig into those. The first one, be honest with God and with others. Now here's the thing about being honest with God. You can do it or not do it. Uh, he already knows like what you're thinking and saying and doing and all the things. So like you could try like keeping it from him, that's fine, that's a choice that you have. Um, I don't really recommend it. Um, and so we're gonna be honest with God. And the good news, is that God is not outraged by our anger. He's not outraged by our questioning or our fears or our doubts. It's okay to lament. In fact, there's a whole book of the Bible called Lamentations. Like It is okay to lament. Our God is big enough to handle those things from us. He doesn't stop loving us because of these things and in fact, Good news, there is nothing that we could do to make him love us less. There's nothing we could ever do to make him love us less. So it is okay for us to lament, but we're not gonna live there. It's okay for us to pass through the camp, but we're not gonna set up our tent there permanently. And it can be tempting to do for Sure, um, but one thing that Pastor Matt always says is that feelings are an indication, they're not the whole truth. And so we're not gonna set up our camp permanently in the angry, frustrated, uh, doubtful area. And here's why, and you guys, if we could get a hold of this, if I could get a hold of this, here's the thing. My circumstances are not the mark of God's goodness the cross is. My circumstances are not the mark of God's goodness. The cross is. And so let's be honest with God. And in fact, even Jesus, God's son, was honest with God. The night before he was crucified, he was scared. He knew he was about to be tortured and murdered. In Matthew 26, it says, Jesus, the night before he was crucified, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He asked his friends to keep watch with him and to pray with him. And it says, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Whenever I read that scripture, side note, I think of um, this time when my sister and I were growing up, and she could be a little extra sometimes when we were growing up. And she had to have a strep test. Um, and she, like I feel bad now, but she was so scared about that strep test and she cried and screamed so hard that the blood vessels in her face burst. And it was like, sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. And so when I read that scripture, like that's the visual that I have of um, being in such anguish and praying so earnestly that his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Jesus was distraught, you guys, and he was honest with God about it. He even begged God for a way out three times. He said, if it is possible, take this cup from me. If it is possible, take this cup from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Because Jesus knew that the cross would be the mark of God's love for us. And God was not outraged by Jesus' fear and his questioning because God's big enough to handle it. So I was telling you about that night 
in the hospital. Um, the next morning, I woke up, and I knew in my gut, like I knew in my soul that God was real. But man, was I angry. And I was angry for like weeks. Like long after Andy's discharge, we were back home. He was recovered. Things were back to normal. I was setting up my tent in the camp of anger. I was believing the lie that God was not good. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I was honest with God in that season. I was maybe too honest with God <laughs> in that season. God heard some words from me that I can't, like, repeat on this stage here. So God was very clear <laughs> on how I was doing at that point, what I was thinking um, in that season. Um, but I kept feeling this nudging from him. Be honest about this. Be honest with others. Don't just tell me. I, I, I got it. Thank you. Let other people know how you're doing as well. And you guys, I think one of the things that saved my heart in that season was vulnerability, being willing to be transparent with people that I loved and that I knew loved me. Um, because I could have come back to work at a church as a pastor and been like, God is good, everything is great, woohoo. Um, I don't think anyone would have believed me <laughs> if I had pretended, but I could have tried. Um, I didn't, however. Um, I told them what was going on, and I was honest with them. I, and even, I remember the week after we got home from the hospital, uh, we had a worship team meeting. At that time, because of COVID, we were doing, uh, every Thursday night, we were doing Zoom calls as a worship team. And we would pray together, and we would worship together, and somebody would share a devotional or a Bible study or something. And that week, I was up to share it. Um, and all week, <laughs> all week, I was like, I'm not doing it. Like, I'm not sharing something from the Bible. Like, I'm too angry. I'm not doing it. Day of, I was like, mm -mm, not doing it. And I kept feeling this nudging from God, like, just tell them how you're doing. Just tell them where you're at. Tell them what's going on with you. And I was like, no, God, you're not the boss of me. I'm not doing it. You can't make me. The meeting had even started, you guys. And I was like wrestling with God, like, no, you cannot tell me what to do. I am not telling them how I'm doing. <laughs> and so then it came time to share and everybody's looking at me like, Okay, so I ended up being honest with them and saying, you guys, I'm so angry with God. Um, and I cried with them. And I told them exactly where I was at. And I even read Psalm 77 to them. And it's like, guys, like, I don't see God's compassion. I don't see his mercy. I don't see him at work right now, and I'm so angry. And do you know what they did? They cried with me. Because sometimes, when you're in the depths of despair, you need somebody to come down into the depths with you, and sit there with you, and hold that space with you, and cry with you. And that's one of my all-time favorite things about South Point Church, is you can be real here. You can be honest here. This is a safe place. <clears throat> so in Matthew 26, Jesus was vulnerable and he was honest with God and he asked his friends to come alongside him. So when we're in pain, we're going to be honest with God and with others. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pray and ask for help. First, we're gonna ask God for help. Um, Philippians 4, four through seven, one of my all-time favorite scriptures. It has some reminders of things that I have trouble remembering. Um, so the book of Philippians is written by Paul, and he wrote a letter to the church of Philippi. This is why it's called Philippians. So this whole book of Philippians is just his letter that he wrote to this church. And Paul, in his lifetime, experienced some pain. He had seen some things. He had been through some suffering. So he um, lived through famine. He had been falsely accused of a crime and imprisoned for years. He had lived through a shipwreck. So like he had been through some stuff, okay? And yet he writes to this church. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Really, Paul? Always? <laughs> like always? 
all the time? Really? In all the circumstances? Are you sure? And then he goes like, okay, for people like Tracy, I will say it again. Rejoice. Like, dang it, Paul. Okay. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, because there is always something to be thankful for. Present your request to God, and the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds, because even when we believe the lie that God is not good, even when we believe the worst of him, he gives his best for us. Even when we believe the worst of him, He gives his best for us. He gives us his peace that surpasses all understanding. So back to that time in the hospital, I was so angry with God, and I was texting with some friends and telling them what was going on. And I said to them, I said, I can't pray. I'm too angry to pray. And one of my friends, I think it was Jen Curtis, who's our next-gen pastor, she said, that's okay. We'll pray for you. We've got you. And they did. Family and friends surrounded us. They had already been praying for Andy, but they continued to pray for us. And they also helped practically in a lot of practical ways for our family in that season. One friend even sent cake to the hospital. I mean, like, that can never be the wrong answer, obviously. Okay, and so just keep that in your back pocket when somebody's having a tough time. Like, that was super helpful. Um, So after we're honest with God and with others, we're going to pray. We're going to ask for help from God and from his people. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to remember God's deeds and his promises. Because even if we can't see the good in the moment that we're in, that doesn't mean there isn't good to be seen. Even when we are in that pit and we are laser focused on our pain and our suffering, sometimes we cannot see anything other than this. We have to choose to remember God's deeds and his promises. And so, because pain can make us believe that lie that God is not good, but there is good to be seen. Back in Psalm 77, so Asaph was in that pit, and he was believing the lie that God was not good, but he remembered. It says, then I thought, to this I will appeal. In another version, it says, this is my anguish, but I will remember. The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your ways through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. When Asaph was in pain, he couldn't see God, and he was believing the lie that God was not good, but he remembered God's promises. He remembered the works of God's hands. Last week, Pastor Betty kicked off Summer in the Psalms, and she was talking about um, David, long before he was king, was living in a cave. And she said, David praised God from the cave. And if you missed last week's sermon, you're going to want to go back and watch it. You can go onto our YouTube channel and watch week one of Summer in the Psalms. 
And she said, We've, we're going to praise God from the cave. And so we're going to do the same thing, you guys. We're going to remember the works of God's hands because remember, my circumstance is not the mark of God's goodness. The cross is. And you guys... One of the things that I think is hardest to like wrap my head around as a Christ follower is this, that sometimes the healing comes in heaven and not on earth. Sometimes the healing comes in heaven and not on earth. From this very stage, we sing songs. You've heard me sing songs of God performing miracles. We sing, I've seen you move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. We sing, I believe there's another miracle here in this room. We sing, I'm gonna see a victory. And is that just for show? Like, is that just to make us feel good? Absolutely not. If we didn't believe it, we wouldn't sing it. If we didn't know it to be true, we wouldn't sing it. <clears throat> we serve a God who can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. I have seen miracles in my own life. I have seen healing in the lives of those that I love. There is no doubt in my mind that God can do all things and nothing is impossible for him but Sometimes the healing comes in heaven and not on earth. We are not promised the miracle and the healing while we are on earth. We are promised that God is for us and he will never leave us or forsake us. We are promised that the battle is won and we will see a victory. But that victory may be in heaven and not on earth. So when we are in the pit, when we are in the cave, when we are in the hospital room, we're going to remember God's deeds and his promises because my circumstances are not the mark of God's goodness. The cross is. And we can trust God's character, not our circumstances. We can trust God's character, not our circumstances. And you guys, his ways are not our ways. His ways are not our ways. In Isaiah 55, eight through nine, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Guys, his ways are not our ways. God works in due time, not in our time much to my dismay. Sometimes the healing comes in heaven. And you guys, I don't have an answer for why pain happens. I don't have like a logical like, well, because of this and da, 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 da. Like I don't have a way that we can wrap our heads around the pain that takes place so that it can make logical sense. But I know that God works for our good even in the pain. He works for our good. He comforts us. He loves us. My circumstances are not the mark of God's goodness. The cross is. My circumstances are not the mark of God's love for me. The cross is. The worship team, before I came up, sang, wait on you. And they said, I'm going to wait on you. I've tasted your goodness. I'll trust in your promise. I'm going to wait on you. And sometimes that's what we've got to do. We've just got to wait on the Lord. John 16, 33, we said at the beginning, Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. But then he goes on to say, but take heart. I have overcome the world. But take heart. I have overcome the world. You guys, at South Point, we do this thing, uh, this small group experience called Rooted. 
And if you um, haven't been a part of it, I really encourage you to. It's a powerful small group that takes place over the course of 10 weeks and you dig into some big things and one of them is pain. Uh, But there's also things like prayer and uh, praise and purpose and worship and so much more. And if I can give you a challenge today, it is to become a part of a rooted group because you get to do life together. The tagline of Rooted is connect with God, the church, and your purpose. And guys, a lot of what we talked about today, I learned when I went through Rooted with the staff. And so I highly encourage you, if you've already been through Rooted, awesome. Would you consider being a leader? Because we're gonna need lots of them. So Rooted is gonna kick off again in the fall. Right at this very moment, you can take out your phone and you're gonna go to this website, southpoint4u.com slash rooted. And you can answer, it's like two or three questions that says like your name and yes, I wanna be a part of Rooted in the fall and your contact information. And when we get those groups up and running in like September, we're gonna reach out to you. We're gonna say, okay, it's go time. Because I will tell you that people who have participated in these Rooted groups will tell you that it was impactful to their lives. And I really encourage you to consider taking part of a rooted group in the fall. You guys, in just a minute, the worship team's gonna come back out and we're gonna sing a song called Bigger Than I Thought You Were. And it says, my doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were. So guys, let's remember that even though pain makes us believe the lie, God is not good. My circumstances are not the mark of God's goodness. The cross is. Let's pray. Father God, God, we love you so much. God, we thank you that even in pain, even in suffering, God, you are there and you are good and you are working and you love us and you will never leave us or forsake us, God. We can always count on you. God, you can do all things. We love you, God. Would you move in the hearts of each and every one of us here today? God, draw us closer to you every day. We love you, Father. In your son's name we pray, amen.